Hi, this is Ken Salvo from ColonaGardens.com and GrowerCoach.com, and today we're just having a quick look at some of the uh, rhododendron families. Uh, we're located here in the Okanagan Valley where uh, the soils tend to be a little bit clayish, a little bit more alkaline, and uh, rhododendrons really love acid conditions and, and moist, deep soils. And if we have a look at this particular one, he's suffering, he's got this yellow pale uh, coloration and smaller than normal leaves. And that's definitely showing us that the plant is suffering from an alkalinity issue. So sometimes we can add Tiger 90 as a little product, it's a beaded or pelletized sulfur, and we can apply a little bit of that around it. Just a small amount, lightly sprinkled is all that's needed. That helps to acidify. We could add peat moss, because peat moss is acidic, but adding any compost around the plant is gonna be beneficial. Um, just to, because any compost is gonna have organic acids in it, they're gonna help to acidify slightly. But that's what the plant will need, and that's usually one of the best treatments. Um, whether this guy is too far gone or not, I don't know. It's got a lot of dead wood in it, and uh, time will tell. Uh, another thing that this guy has is he's got some issues here with some of these uh, leaves that have been chewed, and this is a weevil, weevil attack. So you can see, I'm going to hold these up for you. So you can see that those leaves have notches cut out of them out of the sides, and that's just telltale weevil damage. And weevils are a little beetle. They call them root weevils, another name. But the beetle itself uh, climbs in the, in the tree or in the plant and it'll chew on the leaves, it notches the leaves. And uh, it can be quite detrimental and it'll sometimes even chew the bark. But uh, they lay eggs at the base of the plant, the eggs hatch and the little larvae get down into the roots and they eat the roots all winter. So being spring right now, uh, that these guys are actually just starting to get active as a little grub. So sometimes we can use products like Grub Buster, some of the, uh, the biological controls, it's actually an, a living nematode. Nematode is a tiny microscopic worm that eats these larvae. So we just pour some on it and that can be a solution to that. But other than that, uh, rhododendrons can do well as long as we keep them in partly shaded areas here and uh, nice, moist, deep soil and try to think organic matter, think compost, peat moss, that sort of thing. That's stuff that's going to be acidic and be good for rhododendrons in this climate. Uh, also, but you have to pick the right rhododendron. So hopefully what we're dealing with here is, is when we go to a garden center, we're hoping that the garden center has uh, found the information and they've researched what varieties are going to grow in this condition in these climates with our temperatures because we can go down to minus 20 in the winter time degrees Celsius that is and uh, so that's just something to be aware of is that we're hoping that we're going to rely on the garden centers to bring varieties in that are going to live here and ideally a little bit alkaline tolerant is not a bad uh, idea as well there are a few that are more tolerant than others so uh, that's basically it for rhododendrons today. Rhododendrons are, are a great plant and they'll survive here quite well. They're not totally drought tolerant. They need a reasonable water supply. But with most uh, irrigation systems, we can supply a reasonable water supply for this kind of climate. So that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. And remember to check uh, all of our websites for more information.